Okay, so this is the second instalment of uh, how we convert word equations into symbol equations. In the first video we looked at two examples and hopefully now we'll look at the remaining examples. So I'll just scroll through to get to those. Right, so here we've got the reaction of magnesium and oxygen which forms magnesium oxygen. No way, that's a, that's a bit of a... Uh, a typo there, that uh, should say magnesium oxide. Um, so, let's go through this in order. So, write the symbols for the metallic elements in the question. Well, the only metallic element appearing as an element is magnesium, so that will be Mg. Uh, the next step is write the symbols for the non metallic elements in the equation. So, oxygen is the only non-metallic element appearing as a non-metal, or appearing as an element. Uh, now I've written O2. Have a look back at whether oxygen appears in that magic seven on your periodic table. And it does. So oxygen is a diatomic element. Now magnesium oxide is a compound. So we're now on to looking at our compounds. Um, we need to use our valency tables, so please get that out and look at the valency of magnesium, which is 2. The valency of oxide is also 2. They're both the same, which means we just have one of each. So it's just going to be MgO. Now, we come on to the final stage, which is balancing it using big numbers. We've got one magnesium here one magnesium here. So it appears that magnesium is okay. We've got two oxygens and only one oxygen here. So we have to do some balancing and well maybe let's sort out our oxygen. So let's put two in front of MgO. And what that does is it means we've got two oxygens which nicely balance over here but it means we've got two magnesiums. Previously we only had one. So what I'll do is I'll put a 2 there, and that means we've now got 2 magnesiums, 2 magnesiums, 2 oxygens, 2 oxygens, and it's all nicely balanced. On to the next one. Right, slightly more complicated. And I'm looking along my equation for metallic elements, and I can't see any metallic elements. In fact, I can't see any substances which are appearing as elements at all, which means we move straight on to write the formula for the compounds in the equation. So we're going to have to use our valency tables and let's do iron 3 chloride first of all. So iron has a valency of 3, it tells us that in the words. Uh, chloride has a valency of 1, we swap them over so we have a 1 and a 3, which means we'll have 3 iron, sorry, I beg your pardon, 1 iron and three chlorides. So we'll have FeCl3. That's not a very good three, is it? That's a terrible three. Let's see if I can uh, erase that. No, I'm struggling to use the eraser today. So uh, FeCl3, it'll have to be. Um, sodium hydroxide, well, sodium has a valency of one. Hydroxide has a valency of one. They're both the same, so we just have one of each. So Na. OH. Now, sodium chloride. Uh, I'm running out of space. So, sodium has a valency of 1. Chloride has a valency of, just check, the period, check your valency table, 1. So, that makes it NaCl, as they're both the same. Iron 3 hydroxide. Right, I'm just going to do my rough work up here. So, iron is 3. Hydroxide is 1. Swap them over. So we have 1 and 3. Now, remember what we said about hydroxide. It's a compound iron, so if we have three of them, we need to wrap some brackets around the OH. So here we have Fe brackets OH, and we have three of those hydroxides, so we've got our three here. And at that point, we realise that we've written all the formula of the compounds in the equation, so we're now on to balancing using big numbers. Um, 
this is going to be a bit of a hassle or a bit of a faff because we've got four substances. Uh, we've actually got five different elements going on in here. Um, so I'm actually just going to write iron, um, sodium, oxygen, hydrogen and chlorine here. And on the left and right beside each element I'm going to put what appears on each side. So I've got one iron on the left and I've got one iron on the right. I've got one sodium on the left, I've got one sodium on the right. Oxygen, I've got one. Ooh, but on the right hand side over here, I've got three oxygens. Um, so I'm gonna write it like that. Now this this might might be a little bit it's a little bit different to how I did it the first time round, uh, but it's because of lack of space on my board. Uh, normally I'd write out a big table for this. And hydrogen, uh, let's have a look. Uh, I've got one hydrogen here and three hydrogens there. So one and three. And chlorine, oh, I've got three chlorines, a very poorly written three, but we've got three chlorines over there and one over here. So let's put that in there. So, um, so some of our elements are, well, some of our substances already seem okay. The iron seems fine, sodium seems fine, but there are a lot of threes cropping up here, which suggests that we might need a three to balance our equation. So, why don't we try that? Why don't we try balancing uh, the chlorines to start with? So we have three on the left. Let's try making three on the right. So if I put a big three in here, that means I now have three chlorines on the right. Uh, now, that's useful, three chlorines. It does mean we also now have three sodiums on the right. Um, so whilst we've sorted chlorine, we've now messed up our sodiums. Okay. So why don't we try and balance our sodiums again? So let's put a three here. Okay, and what that does, it means our three sodiums on the left match. And it also means we've got three oxygens and three hydrogens on the left. So let's add those down here. And you can see that we're actually all balanced. Okay, and in some ways I quite like this alternative table over it now, but the most important thing is that we've got the same number of atoms on the left as on the right. Okay, And that is as complicated as any equation you're going to meet on the IGCSE specification. So we've got one more example for you, and it's a displacement reaction involving group 7 elements. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to write the symbols for metallic elements in the equation. And there aren't any metallic elements in the equation. Potassium is a metallic element, but it's actually a compound here because it's bonded to iodide and chloride on this side. So let's see if there are any non-metallic elements. Oh yeah, there are. Chlorine is a non-metallic element, appearing as an element. And iodine, non-metallic element. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, are those two going to be diatomic? Are they in the magic seven on the periodic table? The answer is yes. If you find out where, look back and find where I wrote that seven, there they are. So Cl2 and I2. And now we have to write our formulae for the compounds. So we've got potassium iodide, potassium chloride. So potassium iodide, let's get the valency tables out again. So potassium is 1, iodide is 1, and they're both the same, so that means we can just write Ki. Potassium chloride, potassium is 1, obviously, same as before. Chloride is also 1, so KCl. And now we're going to have to balance, okay? Because unfortunately, we've only got one iodine here, we've got two iodines here, we've got two chlorines here, and only one over here. I'm not going to bother drawing out a table, um, but let's try and even up the chlorines. So let's put a 2 in here. And that means we've got two chlorines here and two chlorines over there. Let's try and sort out the iodines. We've got two here and only one there. So let's put a 2 there. 
And that means we've got two potassiums and two potassiums, two iodides, two iodides, two chlorides, two chlorides. So we are balanced. Okay? And that concludes this video. Now, I wholeheartedly recommend that you go and practice a whole load of these and then check your answers against a mark scheme. Check you're doing them right. It's the only way to ensure that you've got a solid level of understanding of this very, very important topic.